Hello everyone, this is Brian Lagunas and welcome to part three in a multi-part series discussing how to build the IG Outlook Prism application. In the last part, part two, we saw how to create our shells for both the WPF and Silverlight uh, platforms. So the next step is to go ahead and create a module and do just that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by creating a module. We'll start with the mail module and we'll, we're only gonna concentrate on injecting a Outlook bar group for the navigation on the left-hand side. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a module starting with the Silverlight project. So I'm gonna right click the modules folder here. I'm gonna say add a new project. This is gonna be Silverlight. We'll make it a Silverlight class library. I'm gonna make sure I put it in the correct location. I'm gonna call this igoutlook.modules.mail.sl for Silverlight. We're gonna do Silverlight 5. Just delete this class. Now here's a tricky part. Here's a part that a lot of people don't get, they miss or they just don't know about. We're gonna go ahead and right click our project, go to properties, and on the assembly name and default namespace, we're gonna delete the .sl. We do this because we want all of our namespaces to match up across both WPF and Silverlight so we can share our code. Now, in order to specify or tell Prism that I have a new module to load a module, uh, I need to create a class that implements iModule. Now, because we're gonna have more than one module, this means we get to add a base class to our infrastructure project. So I'm gonna add a new folder. This is where my Prism code's gonna go. I'm gonna add a new class. I'm gonna call this module base. Because this is gonna be used for every module we create. So it needs to implement iModule. We're actually gonna make this an abstract class. Make sure we implement the interface. Now we create a constructor. Okay, now our module base is going to be resolving types, registering types, and injecting views. Uh, so we're gonna need a reference to the container and to the region manager. So in order to get that, we need to add I unity container and an I region manager to our constructor. So what this does is whenever a module base instance is created, uh, unity is going to see that this class depends on a container and on a region manager and it's going to give us an instance of those classes. So of course, when we get these, we wanna be able to do something with them in a derived class. So we're gonna create some properties to store those, those instances. So let's make them protected. Awesome. Now I, I also know that each module in this application is going to be registering types and we're probably gonna be resolving some the Outlook group or injecting an Outlook group. So I'm gonna create two abstract methods. One for registering types. and one for resolving our Outlook uh, groups. So I'm gonna go ahead and call these and initialize. So 
So whenever this class is instantiated, we're going to be getting an instance of a container and a region manager, storing those off, and we're going to be calling register types and resolve outlook group methods from within the initialize of the iModule interface. Now that we've created our module base class for Silverlight, we get to go to WPF and do the same thing in this infrastructure project. So I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna add a new folder, let's call it Prism. We're gonna do our neat little trick of using the same instance of that class. So we're gonna go ahead and share that code, make sure I'm in the source, Silverlight, infrastructure, Prism, module base, and we're gonna add a link. Awesome. Now we can create our module class in our mail module. So we're gonna add a new class. We'll call this mail module. Make sure we add a reference to our infrastructure project. Now we can add the module base derived class. We can implement base types, which for now we're not doing anything. We need to create a constructor. Now remember, we need a Unity container and a region manager to pass to our base class. So we need to come here and add some references. Make sure we're browsing to the correct location. We just need microsoft.practices.prism and we need microsoft.practices.unity. We have those. So now we can simply go I Unity container. I region manager. Make sure we have our usings. And then we're simply going to pass these to our base class. Next thing I'm gonna do is gonna go ahead and add a couple folders to our module. We're gonna need some images. We're going to need some menus. And we'll probably have some views. Now I have some images I wanna go ahead and add to this project. So we'll add some existing items. Add those to our project. We're gonna, these images are gonna be used in our Outlook group. Make sure they're resources, do not copy. Now we're gonna go ahead and add an Outlook group view that we're going to be injecting into our Outlook bar that exists on our shell. Now there are lots of ways to do this and uh, technically you can data bind all of the groups and all the content within your Outlook bar with the Infragistics Outlook bar uh, control. But for demonstration purposes, I'm going to actually create a user control. So we're gonna add a new item. It's gonna be a silver light user control. I'm gonna call this mail group. Now this user control is actually gonna be the Outlook bar group view that we'll be injecting. So let's go ahead and do a cool little trick. I'm gonna go to my toolbox. I'm gonna take my Outlook bar group. And what this is gonna do is it's just gonna create my references for me and it's gonna add my namespace. I don't need it, so I'm gonna delete it. Actually, I don't need any of this. And Visual Studio throws all this uh, design designer stuff in there for blend. I don't ever use that, so I just delete it. So now what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna go IG, and then we're gonna call this the Outlook Bar Group. Outlook Bar Group. 
Make sure we copy this down. We're going to give this a header. This is mail. So don't forget to go to your code behind and you can either leave this blank all together or you can actually show the, the class you're deriving from. Now what we've done is we have made the Outlook bar group control from Infragistics the root element. So it's no longer a user control per se, but it's, it is an actual Outlook bar group control. So what we want to do now is we want to use those images we created. So we're going to say Outlook bar group large icon template. This is a data template. And we're simply going to be using an image. And we do the same thing for the small icon template. So we'll go ahead and select our image. The large is the male 32. Small is the male 16. This is all we really need for now. We're not having any content right now. We're not having any navigation just yet. I just want to get this view into our shell. So now that we have an Outlook bar group, we need to tell Prism to inject this group into our Outlook bar control on the shell. So in order to do that, let's go into the mail module. Now remember that resolve Outlook group abstract method we created in our base class? Well, here's where we're gonna use that. Now I'm gonna say region manager, dot regions, region name, dot add, container, dot resolve, mail group. So on the regions collection here, you have an indexer for a type of string. Now I hate magic strings. So this is a perfect time to go into our infrastructure class and create a, uh, a constant for the names of our regions. So let's right click our infrastructure class, add new class. We'll call this region names. And so you don't have to watch me sit here and type all these region names out. I have them readily available. Have one for the content region, the rib and tab region, and the outlook bar group region. So now what I can do is I can use our region names class to eliminate any magic strings in our syntax here. So what this is going to do is whenever this module is loaded, we're going to resolve a new instance of our mail group, and then it's going to be added to the Outlook bar group region we created on our shell. Before we check that out, let's not forget to go to our WPF infrastructure class, add existing item, make sure we get our region names class, add as link. Okay, so we're sharing that code now. Now the next step is we need to let our shell application, our Prism app, know about this module. And there are lots of ways to do this. So let's go ahead and go to the shell Silverlight application and open up our bootstrapper. So Prism has this concept of what's called a module catalog. Uh, the module catalog basically tells Prism where to find and load 
the modules for this application. Now, you can do it from scanning directories, app configs, XAML files, you can do it from code, uh, or you can even download it from the web. Now, in this example, we're just going to be doing it all in code. Now, what that means, if we're doing it in code, we actually have to have a hard reference to our module project. Now, this is adding a tight coupling to our shell application, which you really want to avoid any type, any type of tight coupling. But in this case, it's okay, I don't mind. So now that my shell project has a hard reference to my mail module, I have to let the bootstrapper know about that. So I'm gonna start by overriding create module catalog. So we're going to create a new module catalog, and I misspelled it here, fix that. So I'm going to say catalog.addmodule. To add a module is simple, you just say type of mail module. Now notice, this is the type of the module base class of the class that implements iModule. So in this case is the concrete type mail module. Now our Prism application knows to load this module. So let's see what happens when we try to run this application. We have a build error. And that's because we didn't add any of this information to our WPF version. So if I were to close this, you can see that we don't have this mail module referenced. Okay. So what does that mean? That means we have to do everything we just did in the Silverlight version to the WPF version. So I'm going to go ahead and through the magic of video time lapse, I'm going to go ahead and do that for you. Okay, so I went ahead and created all of the corresponding WPF elements. I created the mail module where we're sharing our images, we're sharing our module code, uh, we created our mail group that we'll be injecting. I've updated the shell project to have a reference to the mail so that it will be available in our shared bootstrapper. So the last thing we need to do is make sure that we return our catalog. And that just about wraps it up for part three in this uh, multi-part series. Uh, in this video, we saw how to create a module and add it to a module catalog in our shell. The next step is going to be to create our custom region adapters for our Outlook bar and our ribbon. And we will do that in part four. See you next time.